Hi everybody. Today we're going to talk about a couple of two or three different problems we're having in the park. We're going to give you some helpful temps, tips. Uh, one of the things I've noticed, and lived, I've lived here seven years now, going on eight, the first of May. Uh, when I drive around the park, even at this time of the year, as I drive by, I have this habit of looking at the sides of the houses, and I can see so many people have hoses still hooked up to the side of their homes. It may look something like this on the outside of your home. Now this is what the, the faucet looks like outside. This is what you actually see right here. But if you could see what is actually there, this goes all the back underneath your home in here. And when you turn this valve off, there's a pipe that's a small line goes through here, and it actually shuts off in the back not in the front. It shuts off back here. Now what that does then, when it shuts off here, the water that's in that line runs out and down and out of the pipe so that it doesn't freeze. Now, if you leave your valve, uh, the hose on that valve, what happens, you have an airlock and that can freeze up and it can break before spring. Uh, it can break at any time. But it, you always want to, in the fall, disconnect that hose, whatever you do. You're looking at a savings of about 250 bucks, but you've got to get somebody out. And the, it's no fix. It, it'll bust that copper. They have to get underneath the house, take the skirt off, get underneath, replace the parts. It's a big job, okay? A second tip we have is we have a lot of roof dams right now, and we've had several people have had with that big snowstorm we had early uh, we had snow get up on the roof and it covered up the chimneys now if the chimney gets covered up you're going to uh, have have a real problem your you uh, won't your furnace will not light you won't have any heat now there's two things there's two things that can happen here if you're, you're, that goes out you also have you have to keep your furnace pipe uncovered but you also have to keep Alongside your house, you'll notice something called this. This is the gas meter, but right here is something called a breather. And this little black thing where the circle is, is a breather, and it has to be able to breathe. So even if you get up there, up on top of the roof and uncover it, if you still have trouble keeping your furnace lit, it may be because the breather is not getting air. You've got to get a shovel. I'm sorry I have to tell you this. you got to get on your boots and get out there and dig that out and uncover that so that that, that thing gets air to the breather. Okay? The last thing I want to talk about is ice dams. We've been hearing a lots about ice dams. There's many things, <clears throat> many places we can have ice dams and I, I want to update people on all the different things that could happen and uh, how many different areas that you're losing heat on your house. You, you mean the first thing you think of is well I'm probably getting some from from water is, is melting up around my pipe from my uh, from my furnace which is true that's the worst one but there are several others also you have your furnace, your water heater vent, you have your furnace vent, you have your uh, bathroom stink pipes that go up. There's a certain amount of heat goes up there and that also per puts heat up there. Your microwave vents. I know one gentleman in the park has right now down, down below his uh, microwave vent, uh, I mean up above in, on the roof, he has snow almost 18 inches deep up there. Also if you have pot lights on the outside walls in your kitchen, within three feet of the outside wall where the insulation is the thinnest, that is where you're going to have an escape of heat. I hate pot lights and that's the reason why. If you have them up toward the middle where the insulation is maybe three feet thick is one thing, but when you have them near an outside wall, uh, the heat escapes up and it goes up, up above and you have a problem. In addition to that, you also have a light. A lot of people have a kitchen and a light above the kitchen window. Well, uh, it may just be an incandescent light, like a 60 watt bulb. Have you ever put your hand around a 60 watt bulb? It's very warm. That, watt, that heat goes up that pipe, 
up that uh, incandescent bulb and goes up to the ceiling and out and that also will make some. So that 60 watt is, is very important. And the last thing you got to think about is your skylights. The skylights are, are, a, are, are a big problem in the winter time because <coughs> they, the heat goes up to the skylights and so you've got heat up in that pocket and then meanwhile the sun comes down and hits the outside. Now if you only have an inch or two of snow many times within two or three days that sun melts that snow up there. Between the snow up there and the sun and the heat from the inside your home going up that clears off so you get good light which we love in our skylights. Well then the problem is that water runs down to the edge of the roof and builds up and starts to build up come back and comes back up under the shingles. So this is just another thing you have to watch. Well, you want to get the snow off the edge of your home for at least that first two feet and then wait for a warm day when your house is dripping and if you can get up on a ladder or get someone up on a ladder with like a a flat edge uh, pry bar, you can get under, sometimes that ice will get just a little bit loose, you can get a pry bar underneath it, you can just lift it underneath and lift it up and lift it up, flip it up, you won't cause any damage, you don't want to use anything like a screwdriver or a pick or let anybody do anything that isn't careful, you can cause damage, but if you're very careful you can use a pry bar underneath it and you can lift it up. Well that's about it for the tips for the day and uh, uh, signing off Paul Ruby for the tips from Rolling Hills and have a good day.